Now on the far side, as we're clearing things out, um, I don't stop the, the vehicles cutting trees from driving wherever they want. <clears throat> I don't have any fruit trees in here. They will crush some trees, but there's so many others it doesn't matter. It's also interesting to see where they decide to drive. And I want to keep that as interesting and not think it's a plan. So we can consider why they drove where they did, because they thought about it. They thought about it in their heavy vehicles. You know, they thought about what was the easiest route. And those are instructional. They've done something for us, they've thought. So the main thing we need to do is not think that that is the best plan for where anything should go. <laughs> It's absolutely a terrible idea, but it's interesting. So it's one data point. But the other thing we want to do is have a focus on roads on contour. So what we'll do is we'll build the roads on contour that we know we want. Flat roads that curve with the slope of the hill. Then we can look at these spots that in most cases, you can barely tell where they've driven. It depends on how many times they drove there. So it might just be kind of two, two channels where the plants are extra squished, where the tires squished them, you know? Or if they drove it a bunch, then it could be that it's dang near a road for walking. Now, for walking, we should totally consider those as awesome trails, potentially. So um, any roads that we are going to have are going to be directly uphill with water control, uh, much as is described in pattern language, the book. And uh, I think that's gotta be the better way to go. That's to reduce total road footprint. But roads are not the same as trails. And I love the idea of separating people and cars. And so what we should do is, uh, as we do the, the level trails on contour, and then we determine where we're gonna have the other roads that go up and down, then we look at, okay, where else are we going to have trails? And where the guys drove with their trucks is one piece of information telling us what might or might not make sense in that. But even then, let's not get too distracted. It could be a bad idea. It could be a good one. So this is the case with a lot of design things is that we're surrounded by distractions, values we think we have, uh, past experiences, and what seems so obvious and true to us. Something we couldn't possibly argue with is potentially completely wrong. So all of the data points I just mentioned to you are just data points. My real solution for, for having things be better designed and not be distracted by these kinds of by all of everything, really. I'm not gonna say details because it's all details. It's everything we think we know. All the things that make us so wrong in so many cases. So I'm not gonna say to ignore any of those. I'm not gonna say to trust any of those. What I'm gonna say is organize those better. Get more eyes on it and have like a format really for how, how we can quickly read and understand the plan for land use, uh, land use planning. Share that with more, eye, more eyes and make better decisions. Now, that's a messier, slower process, but we shouldn't be fast anyway. I think I'm kind of pretty much against any fast land development. I can't think of any reason to bulldoze large areas of anything unless you're going to build an airport or something weird. Uh, here, the goal is very much pocket development. Very careful. Um, very, very careful. And so by publishing those ideas and thinking slowly, we could reduce the human footprint on the land. That's one of the primary goals. So that we, we pave less of it, we house less of it, but we have more people on it.
and a lot of other design goals, of course, as well. Yeah, and this gets into the kind of a, the idea of crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing thought. We understand crowdsourcing software development, I suppose, and other types of specific projects, but thought of a design of a place. I haven't seen that a lot. I also have buildings I'd like to design and could easily uh, use the work of architects and engineers, structural engineers, to improve the designs. Now in this case, the far side is actually the biggest area of land I have for which there is no complicated plan at all. Now I've got a bunch of plans actually, but it's not, I mean, they're, they're big scale. It's a huge canvas, I guess. It's a living canvas with a huge value with the, the view here, look at this pretty sky, so close to town. This is a spot that has immense value. And the question is how to maximize that value. Well, I'll make a different video about that.